In this video, we're going to go over 21 German words that are often used in English and that you might have not known are German. We are Diana and Phil. Diana is from the United States and I'm from Germany. And let's just get right into it. Word number one is going to be kaputt. Kaputt, meaning broken and useless and no longer working or effective. For example, someone might say in English, my phone is kaputt, meaning it's not working. Yeah, kaputt in German is with an extra T and it's a very common word we use. We also use it to say something is broken. Mein Handy ist kaputt. Or you would also use it to say if you're super tired, like, oh, ich bin so kaputt. Like the British do when they say, I'm totally knackered. I'm totally knackered, mate. <laughs> And I had no idea that Americans used that too. Number two, Uber. Uber is a word used in English and it's also a company now, but in English the definition is above and beyond or denoting an outstanding or supreme example of a particular kind of person or thing. So Uber could be used in a sentence as he was an Uber fan of his favorite football team. Wow. Uber fan. In German we say Uber and it means above it and it has the umlaut, the two dots on top of the U. And we almost exclusively use it for original meaning. Über den Wolken, meaning like above the clouds, or über mir wohnt eine Familie, as in a family lives on top of me, like in neighbors. Ab above. <laughs> Number three, Rucksack. I've heard this word used often as a backpack or a hiking trip gear or an overnight larger bag. And it's not very commonly used in the US. I've mostly heard rucksack used in older films or international films. Okay. Yeah, but I knew the word before. The word rucksack derives from rücken, meaning back, and sack, meaning bag. So literally backpack. And I was surprised Diana already knew that German word. Number four, Wanderlust. You'll often see this word as an Instagram hashtag. Wanderlust means a strong desire to travel. Yeah. Hashtag Wanderlust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wanderlust. It comes from the word Wandern to hike and Lust haben, to feel like or to fancy to do something. Lust. It is so much used in the social media travel community and uh, not that often in German conversation, but it's very understandable. It's a German word and Germans would more likely though say Fernweh. Oh, Fernweh. Hashtag Fernweh. Number five, Fest. The most famous Fest word is probably Oktoberfest. Oh yeah. But Fest is a Nouns denotion of a festival or a large gathering of a specific kind. For example, uh, gab fest. I feel like my dad always used this when I was a kid when my mom started talking to other people and he'd be like, look, it's a gab fest or a talking party. Or you could also use it the other way around, a sausage fest, when a lot of men get together. I'm gonna use gab fest from now on. <laughs> and it's super common in the German language as well. And it literally just means party or festivity. Number seven is Gesundheit. <laughs> I was surprised Diana used this word when we first met after I sneezed, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I learned this word in elementary school. There was a kid who was German, of German ancestry, uh, and they shared this word with everyone. And everyone would use it as soon as someone sneezed. It was a more exciting way to say bless you to other students and uh, yeah, I feel like most people in the US know Gesundheit. Yeah, and it just translates to health. Number eight, Doppelgänger. This is such a common word used in English and I honestly didn't know it was a German word until I started using German and learning German. Doppelgänger just means lookalike or someone who looks like another person. My German autocorrect typed it with an umlaut, the, oh, the yeah. two dots on the top, and I was prompted to ask Phil if it was a German word. And it is. And it is. <laughs> uh, this word is used a lot in TV shows like Vampire yeah. Diaries, The Doppelgangers. Yeah? Yeah. I never watched it, but also in How I Met Your Mother, you know, there was this entire episode about how they all spotted their doppelgangers. Oh yeah. And they found the last doppelganger to get like pregnant or something. Lillian Marshall wanted to get pregnant. Cameron. Oh yeah. And also in Friends, when Rachel dated Russ, you know, as a rebound from Ross. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, was that a doppelganger. one. That was funny. Doppelganger. Number nine. Nine. Dachshund. We had a dachshund when I was a kid. His name was Max, and uh, a dachshund is just a type of dog, and it literally translates to badger dog, because the particular race or type of dog was originally used and bred to find the dens of foxes and badgers and then go in there, hence the short legs. Yeah. And we also call them Dackel in Germany, but Dachshund, German word. 
cute. In the US, we tend to say dachshund and swallow the end of the word a little bit. So if you hear an American pronunciation, dachshund, compared to a British pronunciation, dachshund. The hund in the American speech is usually not there. Oh, I noticed. Yeah. It's interesting. Number 10. Spiel. Spiel is German and it just literally means play. Like, das Kind spielt auf dem Spielplatz. It's like, the kid plays on the playground. And when I was a kid, it was a word my mom used all the time at the dinner table in English, but it means something different. She would say, and then they came into the office and gave a, an entire spiel about why their vacation to the Bahamas was amazing and everyone must see it at one point in their life. Yeah, I heard that before and I had no idea that Americans use that word. Yeah, just different meaning. Guys, have any of you thought about learning a new language in 2022? I actually did, and if you did too, you should give Rosetta Stone a try, who is this video's sponsor. I just finished their first couple of Spanish lessons myself, and I really like the experience. You can use Rosetta Stone as an app on your phone or on the computer, and I really like their approach of making learning a language very immersive by speaking to me, like fully in Spanish from minute one, and also make me speak and repeat repeat things immediately. Which, by the way, works great because they have very good voice recognition software. Let me give you an example. Ellas cocinan. Ellas cocinan. Ellos nadan. Ellos nadan. And on the desktop version, you can even get coaches for real conversations. My experience so far has been great and I think I'm gonna continue learning Spanish this year. Rosetta Stone is offering different subscription plans, but you get the most bang for your buck, the best Preis-Leistungs-Verhältnis, if you sign up for their lifetime subscription, which usually is 349 euros, but right now it is only 179 euros. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, click our link in the description below. Number 11, Vina or Wiener. <laughs> Vina is a word associated with several things. Like the city of Vienna in Austria is Wien in German. So a Wiener is a person from Vienna. There are also Wiener Würstchen, which is a type of sausage. Um, then there's Wiener Schnitzel or even the Wiener Walzer, the famous waltz yeah, dance, the waltz, you know? Yeah, Faltz, what am I saying? <laughs> to me, Wiener, Wiener was always a reference to a male genitalia. So I don't know, I think, I don't think I'm alone in that. I think other people think that as well. So that's why whenever someone says Wiener Schnitzel, I remember like kids would laugh in a classroom, like, hey Tom, your mom makes a nice Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> no? Yeah, we don't use it like that, but okay. <laughs> Number 12 is gonna be Dreck. Dreck literally means dirt or smut or filth. And we say so ein Dreck, for example, as an like expression of anger or frustration or dreckig or dreckig literally just means dirty. And I had no idea that Americans know and use this word. Yeah, I was surprised to hear this word in German. Uh, Dreck is a word that often comes up in old high school British literature classrooms uh, with a lot of the old English words and phrases. I would see those a lot in books and you don't hear it as often today, but it's still definitely used. I had no idea. Yeah. All right, for the next ones, there are also a lot of food and company names that Americans and English speakers use a lot that are actually German words. I think it's pretty common in languages. Other examples could be like baguette from French or wonton from Cantonese. They keep their names in English as well. But here are some German ones. Number 13, sauerkraut. Finely chopped fermented cabbage, yum. Sauerkraut. Number 14, bratwurst. Just, hmm, give me some nice juicy bratwurst. <laughs> Every American says that at least once in their life. Yes. <laughs> number 15, beer. Just enough said, beer. Beer. Goes with number 16, beer garden. In German, beer garden. It's just a T instead of a D, the garden of the beer. Where you get the beer, not the beer garden. All the German gardens are beer gardens. <laughs> <laughs> number 17, pretzel, or in German, brezel. Yeah, but the pretzels in Germany and the US are very different. This is a brezel, it's more like a soft pretzel in the US, so like those thick ones you get at like hockey games. Yeah. And those little stick things are just pretzel sticks. Yeah. Number 18, schnapps. And in Germany, any kind of hard liquor is called schnapps, but also a shot of that hard liquor is a schnapps, like one schnapps. Hmm. 
And then the US, it's a strong alcoholic drink uh, resembling gin and often flavored fruit like peach schnapps. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, yummy. I don't, know. I don't really love it. <laughs> At 19, back to the schnitzel, as in like, that's a very nice thin schnitzel you've got there. What? <laughs> schnitzel. Yeah. 20, pumpernickel. German bread. It is great, it is delicious, and pumpernickel is just a popular form of bread that originated from Germany. And last but not least, number 21, the hamburger. Hamburg, Germany. The ground beef patty, I believe, originated in Hamburg. That might be a controversial statement. <laughs> but the Hamburg steak was originally made of lower cut meats at the time, and they were ground together. However, the hamburger we know today has gone through several variations and restaurants and ingredients. So now it's served with two buns and some tomatoes, lettuce, pickles, a lot of other stuff too. And it's hamburger yeah. we know today. Hamburger, also a person from Hamburg. <laughs> Yeah. Look at that hamburger eating a hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> you could also eat a hamburger in a very wrong way. Let us know in the comments below if you knew that those words were German or if you have any more German words that you or we didn't know were there, German. There are a lot. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.